Yeah! New shelves! Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? This is technically going to be another video on shelves. Now, I know we already built our regular shelves that we got from Home Depot. In fact, we have two of these, and these are fantastic. We're gonna need a lot of these to store pottery inside of our new studio that we're building. But, there's a little bit more space you can optimize inside of your studio, besides just these regular old shelves here. Now, here's the thing. We could very easily go to Ikea and get us some of these weird floating shelves that are supposed to be like pseudo bookshelves and find the stud in our wall and put these up and put a bunch of these up and put them next to each other and make them look nice and neat. But I have a better idea. I saw this picture on Instagram and was like, oh. Building my studio shelves like this with these types of shelves does a bunch of different things for me. Number one, I don't have to find a stud that sit across like this and look into my wall and measure it. I could just go for the standard and put these directly down the vertical studs of my house. Plus, if I'm being partly real with you, this is sheetrock that is painted, right? But instead of finding the horizontal stud and then pushing these in to make more shelves, I could just look up a little bit where I did not put any sheetrock and I can automatically see the studs. So now I just have to put one bracket here, one bracket here, and the shelf can go across without me having to find a horizontal stud. I can just go with the vertical ones. Then I can get the actual holders and just buy multiple ones. Plus, if you can see, there's inserts on that bracket that goes directly vertically down the stud. And that means that I can change this bracket whenever I want, however I want, to whatever purpose I want, without taking out these weird the floating bookshelf things and reinstalling them multiple times. It's gonna make a bunch of extra holes in my wall. It's gonna make a bunch of extra work for me. I'm gonna have to repaint and reputty them so it looks nicer. I don't wanna do that and I don't wanna put my studio through that. So today we're gonna go to Ikea and see if we can get some of those to have some extra storage space, nice and neat style inside of our new studio. Come on. So luckily for me, my girlfriend has decided to come with me to help me with this. We're gonna go to Ikea together. You know, that place where you either get lost and work there or break up with your significant other. Please don't leave me. It's also very important for me because I can now record and she can drive. Thank you for driving. You're welcome. Love you. Oh, she said it back. Coming to Ikea is actually really dangerous because we just saw this. It's a rolling rack, right, with a wood top. So you could very easily put your pottery tools or maybe some glazes down there and just roll it wherever you need for ease of use. You don't really have to carry. Well, oh, look at that. Yeah, I might actually get this. I have to be really careful for two reasons. Number one, everything I see in here is like, oh, that would look really good for the studio. That would look really good for the studio. And that would look really good for the studio. But then also, I kind of just came, you're, sh you're shorter than me, aren't you? Oh my god. <laughs> but also, I came here for one specific thing, so I, I need to get that one thing. There's a strong theory that the majority of the employees in here aren't people who actually signed up to work here. They're just people who got lost before college. Considering how directionally challenged you are, I'm not sure. I am fairly directionally challenged, but I have you, so I won't end up working here. <laughs> I might leave you. Oh! Here's the super messed up part, right? No matter where we go, I can technically see behind every wall that these are the things that I want for the studio. These are the things that I'm looking for technically. But these are the things that are holding up the rest of the store. I don't want the rest of the store. I want the things that hold up the store. And it's really nice of them to leave this here so it tells you how much weight they can take and how much they are. It's actually super cool of them to do this. And they even sell the, okay, of course they sell the brackets here. I'm just surprised I'm finding everything in one spot, so. 22 inch brackets, these are 15, what do you want? 
think your shelves are only 15. You think my shelves are 15? Let's check. Yeah, you're right, the shelves are only 15, yeah. So let's get like six of those. Every two of them is one shelf. Excuse me, ma'am, maybe you would like some gambl gambly? Would you like to buy some Beckvam? Hmm? Hmm? You want some Beckvam? Maybe you have an exotic taste. Maybe you want some <laughs> some Jakmok. Maybe mean you can go home and do some Yipperlig later. <laughs> I'm actually really happy and surprised we found the tracks and we found the shelves and we found the thing that hold the shelves like not only all in the same area all at the same store I was kind of worried that they didn't have them and we would have to go over to Home Depot to buy the more expensive version of it but these were awesome these were like five or seven dollars per track and then every shelf was what maybe like seven bucks also it wasn't that expensive so we're gonna go back to the studio and uh, we're gonna build these things now not we not like me and it's, it's just, it's, it's gonna be me. Now, if you're following along at home, there's a couple things you're gonna need before you actually start this process. We already have our wall tracks from Ikea. We got about four or five of them because I know that two shelves can technically share one of them. So I either would get three or five of these. If you also just wanna make one shelf, you can easily just get two. I also picked up a box of a bunch of nails and screws from Ikea because Clearly, we have to put those into the wall. I do already have a level, I didn't have to pick one out. And quick potter tip, instead of buying those really long levels, you can very easily get a long ruler if you already have one and just kind of rubber band it to the bottom of your level. And it'll kind of do the same job, it's pretty easy. And I know it seems kind of weird to do that, but if I do have a stud here and I want the shelves to reach all the way over here, this little space here isn't exactly gonna reach it, right? But this whole thing here, if I do it correctly, does reach, reaches the entire length of it. So that's why I do this. But if you are going to get a level, I suggest you either buy the long one or you have one of these big rulers at home and you just kind of tie it to one of your regular levels. You are also, of course, going to need either a screwdriver or a power drill. And depending on your body type, I guess, you will also need a ladder. This also kind of depends on where you want to place your wall tracks because if you're putting them right here and you can reach right here, it's not really an issue. But I kind of want mine a little bit higher, so I'm definitely going to need a ladder. Now, as I said before, there's a bunch of functional reasons why you're going to want to do wall tracks like this instead of just shelves upon shelves upon shelves. The good thing is that I only have to install these once, and then after I install these once, that wall is set with any type or any actual distance of shelf that I want. Okay, so I've only installed two of them so far, but I'm still really nervous about like how tall they are. If you were gonna put a bunch of little shelves in here like this, and hopefully just kind of splay them out on the wall, then yeah, you would have to measure over and over and over and over again. Every time you wanna change these over, every time you wanna move these, every time you get one like this and the other ones like this. But with these wall tracks, you have to measure one time, and from that point on, you can move them wherever you want. So even though I only have two set up right now, I'm definitely gonna be putting one on here right now just to, just to see if it works because I don't want to do the third shelf that would be sharing this middle shelf here and then be like ah I'm an inch off gotta take this part off first I knew that yeah that's not looking too bad I see there's a little tiny bit unevenness but I think that's just my potter's eye because when I look at the level, when I look at the level, it's like, no, it's, it's, it's directly in the middle, but my, I think there's something up with the wall to where it makes it look uneven, but this is pretty good. Now I know that it fits, and I also now know that it's 31.5 inches across. <laughs> yeah, boy. So I think I actually figured out a little potter tip while I was doing this. I don't even think it's a potter tip, actually. I think it's more of a life tip. Oh, I can do that. They hold this much weight. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm just really excited. I've never done this before. And the fact that I have, like, the small amount of intelligence to put this together, even though it is just Ikea stuff, is still shocking to me. I think I actually figured out a small potter tip while I was doing this. This across, right, from stud to stud, hanging down, is 31.5 inches all the way across, right? And of course, I have my level here, and I have my tape measure here to confirm that. But since my next shelf is technically going to be on the same space to make this longer, and sharing this middle track right here, 
all I really kind of have to do now is pseudo put the shelf on right here measure that and then put the track wherever it stops now I don't have to go through the rigmarole of actually re-measuring and taking everything up and down I can just kind of put an extra shelf here and be like okay cool the shelf stops right here that's where I'm putting the track that might be a little confusing so let me show you what I mean all I really have to do is get this shelf put it right on here as if I was gonna put it next to it because this portion is already built and mark this spot right here with my pen right and that is exactly where I'm gonna put the next track it's that easy I didn't have to do all the remeasuring it's actually really cool because instead of getting up and off the ladder to go get my tools again I can just put my tools right here as I work on the next thing So I've technically only hung up one nail. You see, I can still move this back and forth, right? But I'm about to do what's called a pro gamer move. Like I said before, I've already built this track. I don't really have to measure the distance anymore because now I know the distance from the previous track. Plus, I have the measurement, but I don't really have to put my measurement out anymore because now I know that if it is the correct distance, I can just stick one of these in, even though I haven't nailed the top one in yet, right here. Oh, look at that. Look, it's up. Now all I really have to do is screw in those tracks on that side. I don't have to keep it up and keep remeasuring. Now, this automatically has set the distance of my track for me. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think that would work, but um, it's, it's completely working. Guys, it's my new girlfriend. And there we go, we have brand new shelves fitted for our pottery. You know, as I said before, these are kind of my preferred shelves to have inside of a studio, because if I want to add more shelves, all I have to do is go back to the store, get some more of these, get a couple of shelves, and keep adding on. Also, I can easily take these off if I feel like it and move them anywhere else I want. For example, in a couple of days, someone's gonna come over here and wire my breaker box to take in my new KM1027. That means that if my kiln goes this high or if he needs to work on this area, I'm gonna have to move these bottom shelves. That's no problem, really. Usually, if I had some type of other shelves, I would have to unscrew them, take them off, wait till he's done, put them back on. But with these, I don't have to do any unscrewing anymore. I can just take them off. You see, now he has all this space down here to work. I just took the shelves off in a matter of literally one minute. And if I don't want these shelves down here, or he says, hey, we're gonna put your kiln right here, you can't really have anything else around the kiln within two feet, it's a fire hazard, I can easily just move them up there if I feel like it. This is probably the easiest way to reorganize my shelves that I've ever seen. And I really hope that this helps you guys choose what type of shelves you want for your studio. I'm telling you, these are the things that I prefer inside of every studio. That's ridiculous. I, I literally just put these back on in the course of two minutes. This is, the utility of this cannot be undersold. I really hope that this helps you guys choose what kind of shelves you want because I kind of feel like a lot of other people when I first started, I was like, oh, I guess I'm just gonna get some of these bookshelves here and keep placing them on the wall and make a bunch of holes in my wall that are always gonna be visible forever and ever. And then someone showed me these and I was like, why haven't I been using these forever. I want these in my room. I want these in my studio. <laughs> I want these in my living room. You also don't have to do what I did. You don't have to make two and then a shared one. If you want one that just has this space here and none of this, you can very easily just get two of these from Ikea. They're about seven bucks each and just call it a day. Build yourself a row of shelves. Just one big long row if you don't need that many shelves. All right, I'm sorry. I'm just super excited for these because now I get to put stuff up here. So I'm going to go put stuff that I don't need to be up here up here, and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Okay, I'll be right there. Yeah, I'm going to buy a power drill, I'll be right back.